done adding, we've done subtracting, we've done multiplying, and now we'll do dividing of rational numbers. Once again, before we do rational numbers, let's just work on the integers. How about doing these questions? 10 divided by 2, uh-huh, 5, negative 2, uh-huh, negative 5. Negative 12 divided by 3, yeah, negative 4, and then negative 12 divided by negative 3, positive 4. What's going on here? It's just like multiplying. When they have the same sign, the answer is positive. Two different signs, the answer is negative. <coughs> so keep that in mind, let's do some dividing. Now in grade 8 math, you should have learned how to divide fractions. I think they taught you two methods. I'll show you the two here anyways as a review. But one is called the common denominator method. Or the other is by multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay. I won't show you why these work, because you should learn this in grade 8. But if you're interested, let me know. Okay. Here's the common denominator method. The idea is you need to find the common denominator of these fractions. So 7 and 3, I think the common denominator is 21. Let's rewrite both fractions as 21 as the denominator. So 7 times 3, there's 1 times 3, 3 times 7, so 2 times 7 is 14. So here what you have is 3 21s, or 3 over 21, divided by 14 20 ths, or 14 over 21. And what is that equal to? Now that dividing by 21 is like a unit. You're dividing things with the same unit. So what do you do? You just divide the actual numerators. So the answer is just 3 over 14. That's it. Okay, that's it. That's the common denominator method. The other one I think most of you have probably done more of is multiplying by the reciprocal. So the idea here is you keep the first fraction the same. You take the second fraction and you reciprocal, or you flip it, so it becomes 3 over 2. And then that division sign becomes multiplying, because 1 divided by 2 thirds is the same thing as multiplying by 3 halves. So once you get this, then it becomes a multiplication question, then 1 times 3 is 3, 7 times 2 is 14, you get the same answer. Don't know which method you like, doesn't matter to me, just make sure you know how to divide. So. Example number one below, I'm going to ask you once again, predict the sign of the quotient and then determine the quotient using whichever method you like, okay? I'll show you for the first one both methods, but the rest I'll just probably do multiplying by the reciprocal. I'm assuming most teachers like to let you use those. Okay, A, definitely negative. B, definitely positive. Okay, so for the first one, by using the common denominator method, the common denominator between 5 and 3 is 15. So that would be a 3, right? And then 3 times 5, so 2 times 5 is 10, so negative 10. And our answer here then just asks you to take 3 divided by 10, and there's your answer. Okay? If you like the multiplying by the reciprocal, I will quickly do that for you as well. One-fifth, change the divide to a multiply, reverse or flip, negative three over two, and this becomes negative three over 10, same answer. Okay, both ways work. I'll just multiply by the reciprocal for part B. So 11 over 2, negative. We know our answer is going to be positive, so that's fine. 5 times 11 is 55. 6 times 2 is 12. Once again, I better rewrite this as a mixed number. I think 12 goes into 55 4 times. 4 times 12 is 48. 55 minus 48 is just 7. So this is just 4 and 7 twelfths. Okay, how about the next page? Whoa, let's do some more division and remember to reduce when possible. Oh yeah, I totally forgot, we should have reduced. Could I have cross-reduced earlier for the previous example on this page? I should have double checked, five and two. Nope, probably not, six and 11. Don't think there's anything there that's in common too. So I guess not, but here, 
I will ask you to try. Okay, once again, I think you can do all these on your own, so try them on your own first, then I'd like you to pause the video. Once you're done, come back and double check your answer with mine. By the way, I'm using just the multiply and the reciprocal method. If you like the common denominator method, you should get the same answer as me. This is interesting. 12 is a fraction. We can make it a fraction by dividing by 1. Over four. Times in this case now one over twelve. That simplifies. You mix numbers. What do we do first? Change into improper fractions. Four times eight is thirty-two plus seven is thirty-nine over eight. You divide this by four times three is twelve plus fifteen over four. Notice I haven't actually changed the dividing and multiply yet. I'd like to do this step by step. If you can do it in two steps or make it into one, that's fine, but I always like to try to show all the steps. I like the 4 and the 8, I know automatically that becomes a 1 and a 2. The 39 and a 15, that's a little bit trickier for me. 39, 15, hmm. Divide by 3 perhaps? So 15 divided by 3 is 5. 39 divided by 3 is 13. That becomes 13 times 1 is 13. 2 times 5 is 10. Is the answer positive or negative? I believe it's positive. Because you have two negatives, the signs are the same. Let's just rewrite this as a mixed number. So one and three tenths. Yeah. Did you get those same three answers? If you did, give yourself a pat on the back. Yay. All right. And once again, rational numbers don't include just fractions. We have decimals as well. So example number three, I'm going to ask you to predict which quotient is less than zero this time. Less than zero just means it's negative. And that means that the two signs must be different. So I think the only answer for that one is B. Right? Same. Different. Same. Okay. So now let's go ahead and actually do the quotients. In this case, just use your calculator. 2.5. Oops, I'll go negative 2.5. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a mistake, I think. This should be a division here. Oopsies. 2.5 divided by negative 0.1. This actually should give you a bigger answer. Oh, yeah, it's 25. And then we'll do the next one. Negative 10.2 divided by 2.1. Wow, this is crazy decimal. So I guess I'll just ask you to. Oh, I think this is the one that repeats. 8571428585, yeah. So negative four, eight, five, seven, one, four, two, this I think repeats. Okay, and finally the last one. Negative point two five divided by negative point zero two. A nice twelve point five. Okay. One last example here before we end today. On a gold winter day in Calgary. Yes, I do not live in Calgary, although if I liked the cold, I would probably go there. The temperature at the end of the school day was 3 degrees Celsius. That's not that cold, I guess, eh? But, for some, that might be cold. Suppose the temperature decreased by 1.5 degrees Celsius each hour until the temperature reached 9 or negative 9 degrees Celsius. So how many hours did it take to reach this temperature? So you think about this, if I draw a number line, I'm starting here at zero. You don't need to do this if you don't want to, but we're starting at three. And then it's going to now end at negative nine. And the question is, if it decreases by one and a half each hour, how many hours, right, before we get to negative nine? So if you think about this, 
what is the change in my temperature from beginning to end? The change in temperature is actually what? 3, so we started, and we're going to take away negative 9, so the answer is 12. So the change in temperature was actually 12 degrees. Okay. Now, wasn't this a change that was positive or negative? In this case, the change was actually negative. So really what I should be doing when I talk about changes, don't say the starting value minus the final value. It should be the other way around. It should be your final value. Change is always final minus the initial. So let's redo this. It should be negative 9 take away 3 which then gives our answer as negative 12. And I think that makes more sense because you actually decreased your temperature, so that's the negative, by 12 degrees. So if the change in temperature was 12 degrees and each hour it decreased by negative 1.5, then how many hours did it take? Well, the number of hours then would be the change in the temperature, which in this case is negative 12, divided by your rate, in this case the rate was a 1.5 degree for each hour, and I'm going to make this a uh, negative because it decreased, and so now if I take negative 12 divided by negative 1.5, I know my answer is positive, which makes sense, I can't have negative hours, but what's the actual decimal equivalent? 12 divided by 1.5, that's 8, so 8 hours. By the way, if you said, hey, Mr. Lee, I didn't have a calculator, what am I supposed to do when I do this? Well, I'll just rewrite it as 12 divided by negative 1.5. And negative 1.5 as a fraction is just negative 1.5. And, and you can write that as just negative 3 over 2. And now you know how to divide by fractions. So, running out of space, ah, negative 12 multiplied by 2 thirds is 12 over 1. And I believe you'll still get the answer of 8. All right, guess what? Next video, we're putting this all together. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, all together. Can you say order of operations? <laughs> See you soon.